Wait for it. I'm ready. Rational inequalities, but first, we need a game plan. The game plan for rational inequalities. Here we see we got the game plan. We first want to set it unequal to zero. Back that math up. Then we need one term. Oh, one term. We get the zeros of the numerator and the denominator. When you watch the videos, you'll understand what that D is. Uh-huh. And then we're going to test the intervals in between the critical values. So critical, we choose the appropriate in interval notation. So first, we have to set it unequal to zero, so we're gonna back that math up. That's an x minus five divided by an x minus eight great weight. Now I subtract off that three, I get it all over here, see? That's a three, and then that's gonna be um, bigger than zero. Now that we have it unequal to zero, we're gonna get one fraction. Oh, boy! So let's go get that now. I see, I need a common denominator. That common denominator of all my denominators, that's gonna be an x minus eight. Great, wait, I need to take that three over one and multiply it by an x minus eight. Great, divided by an x minus eight. Great, wait, what's that? That's the magic one. If I can multiply once, then I can multiply twice. And that's where you want to be careful right here. You have an x minus 5. When I say careful right here, this minus is attached to that 3. And it goes way. And that's a minus 3x. Minus and minus make plus 24. And then that's all over. That common denominator of x minus 8. Great. I'm going to take it to the top, right here in the middle. What do I want to do? I'm going to gather, collect, and combine. Gather, collect, and combine. I'm going to combine like terms. Oh, boy. I see. I got x's in common, so that's a minus 2x. Wait, wait, wait. Great. And then a plus 19, and that's all over. That x minus 8, uh-huh. And what's that? Oh, that needs to be bigger than 0. Bigger than 0, bigger than 0. Now that I got one fraction, I want to get the zeros of the numerator and zeros of the denominator. So now we find the zeros of the numerator and the zeros of the denominator. So we set the numerator equal to zero. And then that's a minus 2x plus 19 is equal to zero. Oh boy. Then what? We subtract off that 19 minus 2x is equal to a minus 19. And then x is equal to a 19 halves. Is that right? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah! So that's one of our critical values. The next, we look at the denominator. We say x minus 8, great. That way, give it that d, because it comes from the denominator, and we're going to see why that's important later. All right, so then um, that's equal to 0. So then x is 8, great, wait. Now what? Now we want to get our critical values. And now that we got our critical values, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test them on a number line. We're gonna test them against minus 2x plus 19 divided by an x minus an 8. Great, wait, that's this. Where are we trying to see if that's bigger than zero? And on a number line, we have our critical values. Our first being 19 halves, which is what? Oh my gosh, half of 20, that's almost, oh, woo, that's a, uh, Wait, wait, yeah, that's almost 10. That's 19 halves, and eight is less than minus 10, so that's over here, oh boy. So I test something left of minus, or I test something left of eight. Left of eight is zero, so let me put a zero in here. Boom, looks like that's gonna be negative. All right, what's bigger than eight but less than 10? Looks like nine, fine. So we're gonna put a nine in there. So, 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 
If I put a 9 in there, that's a minus 18, uh-huh, plus 19. Is that positive or negative? Can you see that? You can see that. That's going to be negative. All right. I put a 9 in there, and that's a minus 9, minus an 8. That's negative. A negative over a negative, that's going to be positive. So it's going to be positive right in here. All right. And then let's test something to the right of 19 halves. Maybe um a million. Sure. So we'll put Christina in here. Well, a million. A million. That's a... Oh, get out of here. A million. That's a big negative. Big negative. Because that's minus 2 million plus 19. It's still going to be negative. So then I put, I put a 9 in here. And a 9 minus an 8. That's a positive. So a minus over a positive. That... Whoa. Which value was I checking? I was checking a million. So I put a million in here, a big negative. I put a million in here, big positive. So then, that's... Are you kidding me? No, I'm losing... Ah, ah. Well, that's not gonna work. Um. That's a, a negative in there. Yeah, because I got a big negative over a positive. That's going to be negative. Now, what do I need to do? I need to determine my answer. So I want to know where what? I want to know where this function is bigger than zero. Which numbers are bigger than zero? The positive numbers are bigger than zero. So what do I need? I need to know where the interval is positive. So I'm looking for these positive values right here. So we see, we see our interval is going to be mm -hmm, an 8 to a 19 halves. Oh, boy. Now, wait a minute. What if, whoa, 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 whoa. What if this was a or equal to? Then this would be an or equal to. Then this would be an or equal, and this would be an or equal, and this would be an or equal, and how would that change it? It has to do with this D. You know, you can never divide by zero. You can never divide by zero. You can never divide by zero. So the reason that gets the D is because, well, when you're dividing by zero, you can never include it. And, you know, <clears throat> When you have the or equals 2, that means it's square over there. So if it's square over there, because of the or equal to, then it's going to be square over there. And I just wanted to point out the difference of when a 0, a critical value, is in the denominator or when it's in the numerator. And you know... But what does that mean over here if you change something in the beginning? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Then... It has that, whew, butterfly effect, box and flower.